Good evening, good evening. This is Lynette, and this is the 21st Century Watchman's Channel, and it's about time, which is a one-year chronological Bible study where we go through the books of the Bible in time order, just so it makes sense. We're in the books of Mark, John, and Matthew, Mark 11 through 12, John 12, and Matthew 22, respectively. Let's get started, shall we? Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, which is right around here, Bethany, Bethphage, and this is all the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a coat tied and on which no one has ever sat. How specific is that? Jesus got a clean, I'm a brand new coat. Brand new coat. You know, we're we looking for that brand new uh a uh, new car smell. Jesus had a brand new coat he was riding. It. He didn't want the old coat. He got him a brand new. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a coat tied at a door outside in the street and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the coat? They followed Jesus's instructions to the letter. Are we willing to do that? And they told them that, you know, what Jesus had said, and they let him go. And they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna means save or save you or rescue, all of which are very, very, very uh, appropriate. Savior, you know, save us, basically. And then there's rescue us. They needed to be rescued. They were already waiting for this Messiah. He's here. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry and seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard that. And they became, I'm sorry, and they came to Jerusalem and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He didn't care if they were by getting things together for the people to have sacrifices for them to go into the temple. He didn't care anything about that. They were selling in the, you know, the inside the temple. They weren't Outside in the marketplace, they were in the temple. This was not, Jesus was not having them. This wasn't appropriate. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he was teaching them and saying to them, is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. That comes from Isaiah 56, 7. And the chief priests and the scribes heard it and were seeking a way to destroy him. They, yes, you've taken away our money now. We had, they might have been getting kickback from this situation with the people being inside the temple, getting a cut from that. Well, they, but, you know, they were seeking to destroy him, a way to destroy him, for they feared him because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. They feared him because of his followers. They feared him because of his subscribers. They feared him for, because of his influence the original influence, Jesus. And when evening came, they went out of the city. And they passed by in the morning. They saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And people, Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that he I'm sorry, that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, for forgive. If you have anything against anyone so that 
your father also who is in heaven may forgive you the present. So he says, if you have anything against anyone, you know, that you make sure you, you forgive people so that nothing's held against you when you're praying. But back to the fig tree, this fig tree represents us in a way in that he doesn't want to come to us and we have no fruit. We should be bearing fruit, whether it be in season or out of season, we should be bearing fruit. Just throwing it out there. And they came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him. And they said to him, by what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do them? And Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. Answer me and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? Answer me. And they discussed it with one another saying, if we say from heaven, he will say, why then did you not believe him? But shall, but shall we say from man? They were afraid of the people or they all held that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Now, bottom line, Mark 12. And he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a pit from the wine press and built a tower and leased it to the tenants and went into another country. When the season came, he sent a servant to the tenants to, to get from them some of the fruit from the, um, of the vineyard. And they took him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent to them another servant and they st struck him on the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent another and they him they killed. They got two people that already did. And so with many others, some they beat and some they killed. They were just doing this all over the place, all willy-nilly. He had still one another, a beloved son, finally sent to him, uh, you know, sent him to them and saying, they will respect my son. But those servants, you know, tenants said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and the inheritance will be ours. And they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. That's what happened to them. The salvation was for the Jews. And it ended up in the hands of, and, and we ended up, you know, in the hands of the Gentiles, I would say, in giving them opportunity for it. Although God's goals that all would be saved, but for sure they handed over their um, kingdom, a lot of it to us, to Gentiles, because of their um, disobedience, because of their hard heartedness, not, not wanting to accept Jesus as savior. And we were so willing throwing it out there. Have you not read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The cornerstone is the one, the stone that holds the building together. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they were seeking to arrest him, but feared the people for they perceived that he had told the parable against them. So they left him and went away. And they sent to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap him in his talks. So they, they moved from themselves. They send, they're sending people out too. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. But truly teach the, word, uh, teach the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, why put me to the test? Bring me up a denarius and let me look at it. And they brought one and he said to them, whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at it. He was wise. Jesus was shrewd. He was a smooth talker. And Sadducees came to him who say that there is no resurrection. They don't believe in resurrection. These ones didn't anyway. And they asked him a question saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but leaves no child, the man must take the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. There were seven brothers. The first took a wife and when he died, left no offspring. The second took her and died, leaving no offspring. And the third likewise. And the seventh left no offspring. Last of all, the woman also died. In the resurrection, when they rise again, 
Whose wife will she be? For the seven had her as wife. Jesus said to them, Is this not the reason you are wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. You don't know anything. Y'all just dumb out here in these trees. But when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. Oh, oh, that part, quite wrong. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, the most important is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that this that he is one and that there is no other beside him. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. And as Jesus taught in the temple, he said, how can the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself in the Holy Spirit declared, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David calls him Lord. So how is he his son? And the great throng heard him gladly. But they didn't answer the question. And in his teachings, he said, beware of the scribes who like to walk around the long, in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at feasts who devour widows' houses and for pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater con condemnation straight up. They're going to get, they get they're getting all the rewards here. So they're definitely going to be um, they're important here. Everything that Jesus is going to do for them, exalt them in a whole little bit is being done here. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which makes a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box, for they all contributed out of their abundance. But she out of her poverty has put in everything she had. All she had to live on because she deemed that Jesus was more important than herself. John 12, six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Many there, excuse me, Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He's rebuking Jesus. Why wasn't this denarii sold? You no, know, this ointment sold for denarii. And he said, he said this, not because he cared about the poor. That's not why he said it. But because he was a thief and having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what he, um, what was put in it. So he was skimming off the top. So his concern for the poor was not genuine. Jesus said, leave her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. My time is running out, sir. Then the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there. They came, not only account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. This boy was a living testimony. He raised me from the dead. That, of course, they wanted him silenced. Totally makes sense, right? 
The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna. We said it was meant to save or savior or, you know, or rescue. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as, yes, as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowds that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see what you are gaining? Nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida, or Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He's talking about him. He's going to bear so much more fruit when he dies. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my, my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Wow. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it was, it had thundered. That's how the voice of the Lord sounded to them. Others says, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come from your sake, come for your sake, not mine. Now with the judgment of this world, now will the ruler of this world be cast out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. All right. And he said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. He, you see, he had, to, he had to walk away after he said his stuff. Though he had done so many signs before them, they did, they still did not believe in him. So, the, so that the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe. For again, Isaiah said, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn and I will heal them. Isaiah said these things because that he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many even as um, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it. So they believed in, in secret, not in open, so that they could would not be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the glory that comes from man, from man more than the glory that comes from God. You can be caught up in a hype. And Jesus cried out and said, whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who comes, I'm sorry, who rejects me and does not receive my word as a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on that last day. Wow, on the last day. we got to believe. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me, straight up. And again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, when Matthew 22, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son, and he sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they 
would not come. And again, again, he sent other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants treated them shamefully and killed them. The king was angry and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. This one is this likened to the kingdom of heaven and how he's going to get rid of the, the enemy. He's not playing. He's not playing. He's inviting us to the feast. we got to forsake everything else and not worry about fun and go and, and, and be a part of this kingdom. Then he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. Whoever you want to invite, invite everybody. Invite. Call, he draws all men to himself. Go ye therefore, he didn't care. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to, to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him and hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called or few are chosen. See, it's gnashing teeth, my mind. Then the Pharisees went out and plotted how to entangle him in his words. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why you, why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness is inscription is this? They said Caesar's. And then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. The same day, Sadducees came to him, who say, who say that there is no resurrection, and, and they asked him a question, say, saying, Teacher, Moses said, if a man dies having no children, his brother must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first married and died, and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother, so to, to two, the second, and the third, down to the seventh. After them, all... After them all, the woman died in the resurrection, therefore, of the seven, whose wife will she be? For they all have, all, they all have, you know, they all had her. <laughs> they all had her. But Jesus answered them, you are wrong because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. How about that? And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what? was said to you by God, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowd heard it, they were astonished at his teaching. But when the Pharisees heard that they had silenced the Sadducees, who were not as good with the scripture as they were, by the way, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Heart, soul, and mind. This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David in the spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word. Now from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions? Bottom line. Are we ready? I have a question for you. Are you are you ready to repent? And I got even another one. Are you ready to be saved? Either one. Are you ready? If so, let's say this prayer with me. I don't mind. Please do. God bless you. Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to any of his devices. I thank you for forgiving me 
of all my sin. Jesus is my Lord and I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. Now all things become new. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you've said this prayer with me, put your name in and your, um, in the chat and we will rejoice with you. If you put your and if you have um, put your name in the chat, but you don't have, and you know you've said this prayer, I don't have a church home. Put your name in city and state in the chat, and we will direct, help to direct you to a church home in your area, as we have members all over the United States, and we will um, make sure that you're in a, a group of people with a group of people that will love on you and cult help to cultivate the gifts that God has given you and to uh, work according to His purpose. Last but not least, do me a favor like and share this this broadcast and uh, this video and subscribe to our channel it would be great we would love to have you as one of our followers one of our subscribers because it's about time